we glorify you. Lord, we glorify you this beautiful evening, oh God. Thank you, God, for giving us one more Wednesday evening to worship you in truth and spirit. Thank you, Lord, for the awesome time of worship. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Jesus. We want to say thank you. Lord, this evening, we are here so that the real miracle touching the lives we are able to have tonight, O God. We pray for the people of God, your saints, who are tuned to the service at homes, at workplace, maybe some of them are listening while driving. Our prayer, the real encounter of the Holy Spirit shall be there, O oh Jesus, O oh God. We shall carry our miracle today in the name of Jesus. Nothing is impossible with you. Nothing is impossible with you. Nothing is impossible with you, O oh God. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Jesus, O oh God. We commit the servant of God who is ministering. We ask your anointing, O oh Jesus. Bless our God. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen and amen and amen. Praise the Lord and good evening, saints of Jesus Christ. Once again, we wanted to meet you in the precious name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. This evening also, we are not able to gather at the church because of our construction flooring work is going on but thank God for God's grace of giving us this privilege this evening we are blessed to have our deacon brother Wayne Simba ministering us he's an anointed servant of God whenever he comes we enjoy the revelation and interpretation and the expounding of the word of God brother we are blessed to have you let's welcome brother Zimba Wayne to minister the word of God with us this evening amen amen I would like to just thank the church leadership for this opportunity and also thank pastor shall we pray Father, we give you glory, we give you honor, we give you praise for all that you are doing in our lives, Lord God, taking us from one glory to another. We give you the glory and we give you the honor for all the good things that you are doing, mighty God. Now we pray that, Father, as we take in your word, Lord God, may you give us understanding, Holy Spirit. We choose to be receptive and make us receptive to your word. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Today, I'd like us to just attend to an issue, or we could say to attend to a teaching 
This teaching is entitled, What is Your Belief System? What is your belief system? Now, I would like us to just get the meaning of the term belief system or an understanding of the term belief system. Belief system, man is naturally, naturally created by God. And because God, man is naturally created by God, man has a natural drawing to God. Man is naturally drawn to God. Now, because of this, it is very important that a person understands very well and fully in this understanding that there will always be a desire to understand or to fathom that which is supernatural in man, whether we like it or not. Even they that say they don't believe in God, believe in something that exceeds or supersedes their understanding. And God's position in man's life is of the supernatural. So in that, in that study, I came down to a conclusion of understanding, and that was belief system is the natural pull to the supernatural understanding. Belief system is a natural pull to the supernatural understanding. Why is this topic very, very important? I have, beginning of this year, I started taking a study and a look at some of the things that bring about conflict, some of the things that influence conflict. I looked at not just conflict in between nations, but I also conflict in countries, conflict in, 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 in families. And apart from that, I wanted to establish what exactly influences us to make the decisions that we make. Because I have found with all the things that are happening in the world, all these movements of the LGB whatnots, all these... Uh, different type of uh, belief systems in maybe in the same even in the same religion what causes us to have profound understanding or should I say profound decision making or following of these things and being convinced of these things because even though it goes against the natural the natural understanding we still will follow it because of the same I have found that even then, us as human beings will still follow even that which we know for sure goes against the natural. We will still follow it. And it is because of seeking this understanding that I came to this conclusion of saying the natural pull to understand the supernatural. The natural pull to understand the supernatural. Let me say that again. The natural pull it's in us to seek the supernatural. It's in us to desire the supernatural because the one that created us was super, is supernatural. So we have an affinity for that which is supernatural. We have an affinity to always research that which supersedes our understanding. This is why even when a child grows up, even though he may be an orphan, they will still seek out who their parents are because it is naturally in us to know where we come from. And we are made from a spiritual being and the spirit is that which supersedes the physical. So this natural pull to desire to understand the supernatural is basically what I term your belief system. Your belief system is that natural pull inside of you that draws you to the supernatural. Now, you may ask, why do you think this is important? Well, in history, even in our own world history, we have come to find out that belief system determines even the way you will make 
your decisions. Belief systems determine your thought pattern. I'm starting, let me start maybe with the individual. Your belief system will determine your thought pattern. Whether you like it or not, your belief system will determine your thought pattern. How, what you believe in will determine what you're, you're going to favor in your life and what you're not going to favor in your life. What you believe in will determine what you will allow in your life and what you will not allow in your life. What your belief system will determine whether you're going to be a racist or not. Your belief system is going to determine whether you're going to be a bad person or a good person. Your belief system will determine which decisions you will feel comfortable living in. Your belief system. You may say, I'm still not convinced. Let's take time and look at maybe the First World War and the Second World War. These battles were fought because a person, a nation, believed they were better than others. Their belief system determined the whole world getting into war because of a belief system of one person. And one person managed to convince everyone else of their belief system. Now, how did he manage to convince everyone else? Because everyone has an affinity to desire the supernatural. And because of that, it determines the decisions we make and the direction of the decisions that we make. That is why a belief system is very important. But before I delve deeper into this, I would like us to just start by reading scripture. John chapter 17, verse 1 to 8. These words Jesus said, lifting up his hands and his eyes to the heavens. Father, the hour has come. Glorify your son that your son also may glorify you. As you have given him power over all flesh, that he should give eternal life to as many as you have given him. And his life, and this life is eternal, that they might know, that they might know you, the only true God. Already, Jesus is touching in this prayer. Jesus is touching on belief system concerning man. I continue. And Christ Jesus, whom you have sent. I have glorified you on earth. I have finished the work which you have given me to do. And now, Father, glorify me with your own self, with the glory which I had with you before the world was. Let's stop right there. There's a word that has been spoken. Before the world was. Now, I would like to just talk about the term world right there before we continue with this teaching because I would like us to have understanding as we learn about belief system and why belief system is very important. Number one, you see we live on planet earth but the systems that govern man, let me say it, the systems that govern man on this planet earth define it as a world. The system that govern man. So, before there was any systems, it was Christ who was there. 
But there's something that I want us to understand. That when Christ is praying right there, he's making it very clear that what you brought me to do to give these, your children, a direction, or should I call it a new understanding of the supernatural, or should I say your understanding of the supernatural, Father, your understanding of the supernatural, their belief system, that they may understand that you sent me, that I am in you and you are in me, and that I come from you, that the world may know before there was, I was, before there was a system that governed man, I was, before there was anything created for man to even govern, I was. I have brought this to them that they may understand it, that you sent me and that you are the true God and that it is you who determines their belief system. You may understand, you may think to yourself to say, how are you getting this? Well, let us continue. In verse 6, it reads, I have manifested your name unto them, unto the, man, unto the men that you gave me out of the world. Out of what? The systems that govern the world. You see, there are those who believe in the systems. The, we are all conditioned in growing up, we are all conditioned by education to believe in the sciences, to believe in the science of numbers, the science of physics, the science of chemistry, the science of accounts. Basically, we are given a belief system that we should believe. And when we qualify for these belief systems, when we qualify for these belief, belief systems, then the world approves of us of being qualified to be called one who is capable of running such a belief system. In other words, comes even the titles such as uh, doctor, engineer, uh, accountant. Why? Because now you have shown to the world that you understand the belief system. You have the belief system. You have the understanding of that, that supersedes concerning accounts, concerning engineering, concerning medicine. Hence, now you are given the title doctor or engineer or accountant. Because you have superseded that in your lifetime. But how do you supersede that? You convince the system, the education system, that you have now attained a belief system concerning the practice that you are in. This is why a lot of times, when we look at faith, it doesn't make sense because a belief system requires understanding. But faith requires us to just follow. And this is the situation where we have people who say, I don't believe in God. I believe in science because science is fact. No, no, no. What you must understand that what is speaking right there is your belief system in science. Your belief system is acclimatized to science. It leans towards science. It favors science. So every decision you will make in your life will be determined by science fact. But the just shall live by faith. Meaning our belief system has to change. Every decision that is brought up always comes from either someone else's belief system or it is brought up by someone else's understanding of a system that is governing in the world. But the world is not of the standard of the word. 
This is why we have people who believe saying they wake up in the morning and say, no, I'm no longer a man, I am a woman. Because their belief system tells them that that is what they are at that moment. But this determines and shows that indeed even a belief system can be corrupted. Even a belief system can be corrupted. Remember, we determine that a belief system is the natural pull to understanding the supernatural. And basically the supernatural is basically that which supersedes the natural. Hence, we hear of people who, call them, who say to themselves, this is how I was born. This is how I've always felt, really. We will not get into that. I would like us to continue reading. Let's just, write, let's just start from verse 6. I have manifested your name unto the men that you gave me out of the world, the system that governs man. Yours they were, and you gave them to me. Jesus is establishing again. Right at the beginning, it's you who created all things, and they were already yours. We understand this. And they... And they have kept your word. They have kept your word. It is very important. Why is it important that Jesus says this? They have kept your word. Because it is from the word that there is the renewing of the mind. Now, the renewing of the mind is what, again, determines the belief system. We've already defined halfway how a belief system influences, how a belief system causes change, how a belief system will cause you, will determine how you make decisions, how you plan, and how you do, or should I say, how you raise your household. Now, I would like us to go into verse 7. Now, they have known that all things, they have known that all things whatsoever you have given me are for you. For I have given unto them the word which you gave me. And they have received them. And they have known surely that I came out from you. Listen very carefully to the end to be in eight saying, and they have believed, the term there, believed that you did send me. And they have believed that you did send me. It is important. A belief system is being tackled in, in, in this scripture. From verse 1 to 8, a belief system is being tackled. Christ is showing how he has tackled the belief system, the thought pattern of man. They have believed that you sent me. He determines it. He says it right there, right at that point. And he also brings about certain words saying, the world. So the world believe the world they believe in who in me that you sent me that you are the one true god we begin to see christ breaking down the belief system that his task was to break down the belief system of man as we've been talking about the points of belief system a belief system can de a belief system determines the way you will make decisions a belief system determines the way you will make decisions. Today, what has happened? We're hearing churches that are now legalizing same-sex marriages. Why? Most of them don't want to lose their people. They believe they will lose their people or they will lose the congregation when they, pre when they speak against these things. So their belief system is based on mammon concerning money. Most situations 
in the, in the world right now, one of the, the systems that govern the world, one of the strong systems that governs the world is the system of finance. The system of finance causes people to do or change or to become that which they do not want to become. Unless you, they, they are given impossible conditions. Unless you do this, unless you conform in this manner, then we will give you humanitarian aid. Unless you conform in this manner, then we will help you do or achieve this. Unless you do this, unless you do that. Every time mammon is mentioned or every time mammon shows its face, there's always condition. Every time. Every time mammon has to be addressed, there's always condition. If you want to survive, the condition is you need to work. If you want to survive, the condition is you need to, to satisfy demand. If you want to live, you need to have an education. If you want to live, you need to meet the standard or the demand of mammon upon the earth which is called the financial system this is what is happening around the world we see a lot of people who change their decision because they do not want to lose popularity they do not want to be seen not to fit into the status quo Jesus never came to fit into the status quo. Jesus never came to fit into the status quo. Neither when we read this scripture did Jesus come into the world to accommodate the world nor to even support the decisions or systems of the world. But he came for one reason. To change man's belief system that man should believe in God's word and that man should look upon God's word and have faith and that know that the word of God is true and it is the truth and it is the truth that sets us free and it is the truth that gives us liberty and it is the truth that provides us peace. But the systems of the world go against that. We have seen all over the world when we see civil wars, when we see uh, uh, apartheid, when we see all these things that are happening, one tribe rising against another tribe. We see these things in Africa, in Asia, in Europe. Why? It's simple. It all comes down to belief system. A simple belief by thinking you're better than the other person. A simple belief by saying no you have to follow my agenda. No, 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 no. There is no problem. Jesus simply brought it out this way. The doctor doesn't come for the person who is okay. He comes for the one who is sick. So if you feel you are okay, do not push your agenda on others. Do not put your agenda on those that are still seeking God. Do not put conditions on their lives that cause you to cause them to go out of the way of seeking the truth. We have found that this is always the case when it comes to the world, make, the world stage making decisions. Every time. Haven't you noticed that every time a decision is being made in the world, the first people who will be targeted will be the believer. The true Christian will be targeted. They won't target anyone else. They'll target the true believer. They'll target the true believer and make the true believer become or look like the bad person. Every time. They would, it's, it's the same system that was even used to Jesus. When Jesus was captured, they tried by all means to make him look bad to make him look like he's speaking heresy to make him look that he is a false prophet to make him look like he is a bad man they always tried to always make jesus look good look bad and this has always been the case 
in the world, even today, even today, when someone stands up for the right thing, for the right choices, for the truth about the word, they will always face opposition. Why? Because the nature of the human being or the nature of man that causes him to draw to the supernatural, the supernatural comes with its own rules and the rules of the supernatural are called the Ten Commandments. We are required to follow the Ten Commandments. But the problem that comes in is to satisfy the flesh, well, it's okay to divorce. Well, it's, it's, it's okay. It's human for you to feel like, you know, it's okay. And all of a sudden, there's compromise. It's okay to meet in the middle. It's okay to be compromised. It's, you're not doing any harm to anyone. It's okay. The world comes and says there must be a point to meet in the middle. God says, if you are neither hot nor cold, I will spit you out myself. We are asked to live at a higher standard as children of God. Meaning our belief system. We need to renew our mind. In all situations, it is very important that as we preach the gospel... We must preach the renewing of the mind. We must preach the change in belief system. No, I'm not saying you make your own belief system. I'm saying follow that which Christ Jesus had put down. Believe that there is only one true God. And that the commandments that the one true God gave us are the right commandments that we should follow. Because it is very important that we understand these points, belief system will determine your foresight. Your belief system will determine how you raise your family. Your belief system will determine your faith. Let me repeat these points. Your belief system will determine your thought pattern. Your belief system will determine the way you make decisions. Your belief system will determine your foresight. Your belief system will determine how you raise your family, your home. Your belief system will determine your faith. In summing up this message, I will quote from Joshua saying, as for me, in my house, we will serve the Lord. In a liberal world that we're living in where systems are manipulating, systems are pushing people to the corner to change for the worst, it is important that you have a sound belief system. And your belief system determines a number of things including your faith and it determines whether you will believe in God or not. It determines whether you will follow the word of God here on earth as it is in heaven. As for me in my house, will we will serve the Lord. Father, we thank you. We honor you for this message that you have given unto us. We pray that may find a place in our hearts and in our lives and that may our belief system be in tune to that which you want us to be according to your word, Lord God. Father, we give you glory and we give you honor. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Thank you so much, our brother Deacon Simba. Saints of God, I'm sure that revelation from the biblical perspective of a belief system. Thank you, brother. Thank you so much. Let's close our eyes wherever you are. Maybe you are at your home, at your office place, wherever you are. If you want 
God to touch your belief system. Tell the Lord, I surrender my life. I need a transformed mind, mind of Christ. Thank you. And also, maybe you are sick while you are listening the word of God. Wherever you are, the area where you are not feeling well, put your hand there. May the Lord heal you right now in the name of Jesus. We declare healing. We declare healing. Maybe you are financially broken tonight and you don't know what to do. And today, tonight, we want to agree with you, brother, sister, dad, mom. May that financial challenges is removed tonight in the name of Jesus. Maybe you are going through some challenges with your children in a marriage. And this evening as you are connected to the word of God through this miracle night service and you don't know what do, what do I do, Lord? Where am I going? Uh, how I'm going to address tonight? We agree with you. It is well with you in Jesus' name. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord, for using your servant, our deacon Zimba, to minister to us, O God. Continue to refresh him. Thank you, Lord. Wherever people have listened, may you visit them and touch them, O oh God. Now may the grace for our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forever. Amen and amen. God bless you richly. Have a blessed night. See you Sunday, 9 o'clock at church. God bless you.